Hey guys, thanks for joining me today. I'm Tiffany from Perfect Girl and what I want to know is, are you ready for the summer? If you've had trouble setting goals or adhering to your goals, this is the perfect video for you to watch because we're going to cover a lot of information on how to get you started on setting goals and sticking to them. So let's get started. So it's springtime. Oh my God, yay. Does that mean it's going to stop raining? <laughs> no. It means we get two days of sunshine per week instead of zero. And there isn't a more perfect time to get ready for the summer by re-energizing those goals that let's just say fell off with the winter blues. Now, this is not the time to beat yourself up for not sticking 100% to all those plans you had for New Year's. So let's keep it positive y'all and remember why you were attracted to these goals in the first place. I spent the last three years in school learning how to be a coach and basically help people set goals and stick to them. But that doesn't mean that I am always successful myself. I was in a bit of a rut in the fall of 2016. Okay, I'm totally not making excuses, but for real, I had a lot going on at that time. I was unmotivated by my workouts and I was able to examine this further while I was on the receiving end of some coaching. Yes, coaches get coached too. Never underestimate the power of a fresh perspective. I had to take an honest look at what I wanted to achieve and from where my frustration was coming. You would not believe what the issue was. Um, for those of you who know me, maybe you can guess. In the end, I had become overwhelmed with the process. Me? Impatient? <laughs> Never. I knew that there was an end goal and I was so focused on the big picture and not quite being there just yet, I lost sight of the day-to-day -day components of the process, which in effect is the process. There is a saying about not getting caught up in the details or small things, but sometimes focusing on the details is necessary so that when the motivation for your goals wanes, the discipline needed to be successful kicks in. Okay guys, seriously, stop saying you're not motivated to do something. Motivation has nothing to do with it. Discipline does. Knowing what to do is important, but acting on them consistently is the work. You must take action and work little by little, even when you feel stagnant in your progress and aren't seeing huge results, keep it as you're setting your future in motion. Here are four ways to become more disciplined in your health goals. I have offered some suggestions on how, but this journey is about you and it's up to you to decide what will work best. Number one, visualize yourself in the future. These things are not difficult, but will require effort. Get a journal or create a Word document where you can answer the following questions. Where do you see yourself in 20 years? What kind of person are you? How do you move? This is not about work or family. This is all about you and just about how you see yourself. If you're not sure where you're headed, look at your parents or other older relatives because they're there. And that's a good indication of where you could be as well. I do not think that anyone would envision themselves as diabetic or with hypertension or with osteoporosis, for instance. I certainly see myself positively and as a wiser yet physically similar version of myself. Yes, this is the body I plan to have when I'm 60, if not better. If you're not sure how you want to be, get a role model that you can find inspiration in like Carmen Del Orifis, Deshun Wang, or Yasmina Rossi. Okay, so they're all models and they might have won a genetic lottery that the rest of us mortals are not privy to, but I'm talking about their spirit and zest for life. 
You do not have to be a model to glow. It is in their eyes. They're thriving and there's an energy and passion that connects through a photo. And I'm not saying strive to be a model, but strive to thrive. Bring an energy and zest into what you do. Um, that all sounds great, but seriously, what the heck are you talking about? Okay, so look at Babette Davis and Ernestine Shepard, for example, who are 66 and 80, respectively. Mrs. Davis began her health journey at the age of 39, and Mrs. Shepard began at 56. When you look at any photograph or interview of them, they absolutely glow and you can't help but feel inspired by just looking at them. It is never too late to start, but both women started later in life and as a response to health issues they were facing. Change becomes easier when you know that your end goal, of course, but work on making one change at a time. Be consistent and adhere to that change and you'll feel empowered to make more changes. Number two, identify in what aspects of being healthier you find value. Okay, so you have an idea of how you wanna be in the future. What next? The value you place on why you wanna be healthier can come from two areas. It can be extrinsically or intrinsically motivated. If you do something or anything actually that's based extrinsically, over time you'll have a lower chance of being successful because you're doing it for a reason that doesn't come from within. The motivation will be there in the beginning but because there is not the deep personal value attached to it, as the motivation fades, there's less desire to remain disciplined. Determine why you value making certain change, which will force you to be honest with yourself and allow you to look at your desires and fears. Intrinsic motivation is the best fuel for self-esteem and self-efficacy, which are two other important factors in being successful with goals. Self-esteem is positive belief in yourself. One of my goals is to work out four times per week and progress my workouts so that I can maintain and improve my health. So let me give you an example of how I had to improve my self-esteem to not only adhere to goals, but set better ones. <laughs> when I was younger, I took my health for granted and it took about five years for me to discover and work through why I had self-destructive behavior. I sabotaged not only my health, but also many friendships, several of them of which are beyond repair. It's not all my fault though. I lived in Vegas. That city is crazy. Regardless of the factors leading up to it, I took responsibility for my behavior and I realized that the common denominator of my experiences was my perception of myself. I knew I wanted a change, so I learned to value my health and healthy relationships. I had to educate myself on what healthy relationships look like, and I transformed myself into a person who would be able to honor that. Once I began that process, it was easier for me to stick to my health goals because my stronger sense of self. Self-efficacy is your belief in your ability to complete a task. When I first had the epiphany that I was not living the type of life in which I wanted to be, I had to choose two choices. I could wallow in pity and continue as the victim. Can we just talk about my childhood? No, oh my God, seriously, nobody cares. Bye Felicia. Or I could work to figure out what I was doing to contribute to my situation. I knew that it wouldn't do me any good service to give long, detailed explanations as to every little thing that went wrong in my relationships. I guess because nobody cares. I placed the responsibility on myself and I said I knew it was possible to have happy and healthy relationships. I believed that I would be able to find the answer I was looking for and I kept the discovery process open until I started to see a change in my experience. I believed I would be successful. 
Your process will be different than mine, but it takes time. Don't be discouraged and enjoy moving towards a better future. Number three, work with a personal trainer. Even if you do not have private personal training every week, find a trainer and ask for an assessment and a workout plan. If you don't belong to a club, there are personal trainers who are mobile, who can come to your house and even design a plan with what you have available to work out with. With a proper assessment, you know what your starting point is. Okay, so I'm just gonna say this now so we're all on the same page. It's not magic. You wanna see results? You need to bring the science to the gym. Being able to check in with a personal trainer allows the process to be more scientific than random. A PT will also be able to adjust your program and give basic nutrition suggestions so that you can support your exercise with the food needed to be successful. There are basic guidelines for nutrition, but if you're not seeing results, you need a more in-depth plan. You might need to play around with the numbers until you get the right combination for your body type. If you don't know terms like micronutrients, macronutrients, endomorph, ectomorph, and mesomorph, you might have some research to do. There are countless benefits to working with a professional, the best of which is that you will have a partner, someone who has your best interest of health and success as their goal. Number four, set yourself up for success. Once you have determined the overall plan, identified why it's important to you, and gotten guidance on where and how to start, another step is creating an environment that will be supportive of your goals. Make it easy for you to follow through with what you said you were gonna do. Oh, so this is the discipline part. Find a time that you know will work out before lunch, during lunch, after work, it doesn't matter. Look people, stop telling me you forgot to stretch. My dad is 89 years old and even he has a cell phone. Use it, open the calendar or your timer, set a reminder and stick to what you said you were gonna do. Did you forget to go to work today? No, that's surprising. Put it in your calendar Set your workout clothes out the night before and take them with you so you do it before you come home. Look, you already know why you want to do this. Doing it should be the easy part. And again, don't feel like you have to do everything at once. You can build a habit slowly by working out two times a week to start and then increase when you need more of a challenge. If you're like me, and you do it long enough, it'll become easier and you'll get bored and you'll wanna do more. A long-term goal can be to work out four to five times a week, but in the beginning, that is not necessary. If you consistently make smaller goals, you'll naturally feel empowered to take on more. I can't stress this enough. Make sure that you're eating enough during the day to support going to the gym. You can't go wrong with whole foods that are high in fiber and nutrient dense. Have a small snack ready for after you work out. Uh, did you see my smoothie video? Add in some protein powder for a post-workout shake. Ideally, you would do most of your shopping in the perimeters of the store, but as we're all busy, convenience foods are common in most households. Seriously. Check out my sugar video if you need some pointers on that. Getting on track with nutrition isn't something that you need to address right away, but over time, the next natural step to see better results is to examine what you are eating and bring the science into the kitchen as well. You can also recruit a workout partner or significant other to go through the process with you. Having to be accountable to someone else can help keep you in line. My husband and I played tennis together when we first met. It was great exercise, mostly because we were not very good and spent a good portion of the time chasing after balls. And of course, there's nothing like a little friendly competition. And I totally used to kick his butt. <laughs> Poor guy. Guys, it's really simple. 
The most important aspect of being disciplined is enjoying what you're doing. Sometimes the workouts are not fun, especially for people who are not used to pushing the limits of their physical capacity. Workouts are and, and should always be challenging, and for many people, that aspect is not enjoyable. So, suffering together with a friend or a loved one will make you feel less alone in the process, and hopefully, make it more enjoyable, especially after seeing results. Well, I hope you enjoyed those pointers on how to become more disciplined with your goals. Those are just a few examples, so of course, this list is not all encompassing, but meant to give you some steps to get into the meat of the process. Even if you don't do everything on this list, putting yourself out there by doing things to challenge you and take you out of your comfort zone can only work to benefit you. There's no more perfect time than now to begin. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe to my channel. And of course, good luck. Peace.